Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. In this video, I'll show you how to create a pivot table from a filtered list, which isn't as simple as it sounds. By the way, before I start, you may have noticed I've got a new Excel t-shirt, another one for the collection. This was a birthday present from my beloved, and it says the answer to any problem is an Excel spreadsheet. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. Last week, one of my customers asked for help. They had a table of data in Excel, just like this one, and they applied a filter to said data. So I'm going to apply a filter to show only the records where the total revenue is greater than 100. And then they created a pivot table. But when they looked at the pivot table, it had ignored the filter applied to the source data. You can see here that this pivot table shows the number of orders per flavor, and the total number of orders is 25. But if we look at the source data with the filter applied, the number of records is 15. Well, that's how Excel works. It ignores the filter applied to the source data. So today I'll show you a couple of workarounds. First of all, I'll clear the filter from the revenue column in the source data. How big a problem it is depends on what you're filtering on. Let's go back to the pivot table. If I was filtering by location, I could just drag location into the filters box. That adds in a filter above the pivot table and I can then select a location. So let's select Los Angeles. And that has now applied a filter that is showing me how many orders there are broken down by flavor just for Los Angeles. That's simple. But what if I wanted to look at the number of orders per flavor just for the orders where the revenue was greater than 100? At Excellent Ice Cream, orders with a value over $100 are known as high value orders. So let me clear this filter drag the customer location away from the filters box and drag total revenue into the filters box instead. Now, what I could do is I could turn on select multiple filters and then I could go through and tick only the boxes where the value is greater than 100. But how long would that take me, especially if there were a lot of values in the list? Now, rather than showing you the two ways that didn't work, I'll get straight to the solution that did work. If you're interested in seeing why my original suggestions didn't work, keep watching to the end of the video. So I'll cancel this and I'll drag the filter out and go back to the raw data. Now, this data is in a table. If I go up to the table design menu, you can see the table is called sales. So I'm going to add a heading into E2. I'm going to add high value. And column E now becomes part of the table automatically. In E6, I'll enter a formula. It's going to be an if function. So if D3 is greater than 100, comma, yes, comma, no. In other words, if the number in column D is more than 100, put the word yes into here, otherwise put the word no. And when I press enter, it copies the formula all the way down column E because the data's in a table. I'll now go back to the pivot table and I'll need to refresh to get that new column appearing on the right hand side in the panel. So data refresh all. I'll then drag high value into the filters box, set the value of that filter to yes and click OK. And we are now seeing exactly what we want. We are seeing a list of the number of orders per flavor, but only where the revenue is more than 100. If I don't need to see the filter, all I need to do is hide row one. Now, if I go back to the sales data and I add another row of data, so ICE-9824, 
252. And let's make this banana. And this was sold from our Seattle store. And the value of the order was 120. It's automatically copied that formula down to that row because the data is in a table. And if I go back to the pivot table, I still have to refresh. But now it's automatically updated the pivot table. So what about the other ideas that I had to solve this and why did I discount them? Well, my first idea was to create a second copy of the headings and then apply a filter to the revenue column to only show the records where the value was greater than 100 and then copy and paste just the visible cells. Now that will work, that will be okay. This just needs the columns widening and it's fine if there's only a few hundred rows. But you know, if you've got a few thousand rows or a hundred thousand rows, you're actually duplicating the data. So you might get performance problems. You might have file size issues. Plus, if the original source data changes, you'd have to copy and paste again. So yeah, that method will work, but it's not ideal. My other idea was to use the filter function. So you can see here in H3, there is a formula. And what that is doing is filtering to just display the data from the sales table where the revenue is greater than 100. And then I would base the pivot table on this second set of data that goes from H to K. And as more data gets added to the table in columns A to D, if it matches the filter criteria, it'll automatically get added to the list. But the filter function, like the other dynamic array functions, can't be used inside a table, which means that this data here can't be converted into a table. So if the pivot table was based on this range and more data got added here as data gets added here, then I'd have to continually go back to the pivot tables data source and update it to include the new rows here. So I discounted both of those options and that left me with the option that I actually used. Now in Excel, there are often many, many ways to do the same thing. So if you have a better way of doing it or you have an alternative way of doing it that works for you, please let me know in the comments below. So if you found this video useful, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. I also have a free weekly newsletter packed with tips to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up to that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.